In this beginner's guide to animation series, we're helping you to bring your creations to life. In the first few episodes, we've looked at keyframes, the graph editor, and I have included a previous video in that playlist on bones already. In this episode, we're advancing our knowledge of bones by creating a very simple animated blob person. Playlist link is in the description. This video is aimed at beginners that are relatively happy with the Blender interface. If you need a complete starting from scratch guide to Blender, then check out my complete beginner's guide, link in the description. Okay, so I'm in the basic startup file. I've got my screencast keys down the bottom here and I'm in Blender 4.1, but this will work from Blender 4 onwards. First, let's start by creating a sort of blob man to animate. I'll come to the front view and we'll make them two meters tall. That's two Blender units. So I'll zoom in a fair bit, scale my default cube down and move that to the top somewhere around here. Probably needs to be a little bit smaller for a head, depending on the size of your blob person, probably around there. Now to make them a blob person, I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier to them. Find the modifiers here, and there's a shortcut key for subdivision surface modifiers. That's pressing control one, and that will add a subdivision surface modifier, which you can find under the add modifier generate, there's subdivision surface, and it adds one level because I press control one. If I press control two, you can see that it adds it with two levels. So it's subdividing each face into four and then smoothing it out as well into this sort of ball. I think two levels will look good, so I'll keep it on two. Now my blob person is going to be symmetrical so I can use a mirror so I only have to model half. The easiest way to do this is go to edit, preferences, under add-ons, search for auto, and there's auto mirror down there. Make sure that's ticked, that's really useful. I'll close this down, and if I press N on my keyboard now, under edit, I've got auto mirror. I want the mirror to be along the x-axis, so we've got x-axis there, and the positive is the side that has the letter on your Cartesian coordinates just there. So I'm going to keep this side. So x in the positive, auto mirror. Now it looks a bit different now, that's because we've got a mirror here. Now generally speaking, you always have the mirror first in your modifier stack. There's lots of reasons for that, which I won't go into now, but we just want to drag this above the subdivision surface modifier there. That should stop any holes in the middle of our mesh. Okay, so we've got our mirror here. And the great thing about the auto mirror, it cuts our shape in half. So if I go into edit mode, so that's edit mode up here, you can see I've got my shape cut in half and there's the effects of that modifier there. If I hide it, you can see it's in half there and show it, you can see it adding the mirror. It's also got clipping turned on, so I can't select one of these and accidentally pull it apart. So it's a very useful add-on. Okay, so let's build the rest of our person. I'll press one to go to front view. And remember, I'm in edit mode here. I'll turn X-ray on, so I can easily box select vertices like this. So you can see I've selected the back ones as well. Or I could go to face mode, into front view, and again, box select that face. But I need to be in X-ray mode so I can select the back ones. So with that bottom face selected, I can press E to extrude, to extrude out the neck and then extrude a piece out for the shoulders. I'll select the side face here. I'll extrude a piece out for the arms and go to somewhere round about here and E to extrude for the forearm to somewhere around here. So I've got four units there and four units there for the forearm. For the body, I'll select this face here, E to extrude down and we want to go about halfway. So probably around here, E to extrude down for a sort of trunk area. Select the side one here, E to extrude outwards and then select this one here, E to extrude downwards halfway. So that's the thigh and this is the rest of the leg. Okay, so we've got blob man there. You can edit the shape if you like. So if I go to vertex mode, I could start moving some of these in and maybe make it more of a rounded shape. These look a bit big, so I could move these up and maybe add a loop cut across his head. So control R and take these ones and move them in. So we've got a funny sort of blob man like this. He's a bit wide, so I'll select all with A, scale in the Y to make them a little bit less fat. Okay, so there is our blob man ready to animate. So you might want to pause the video here and create the blob man like I have here. Incidentally, if you do want a really comprehensive guide to animation, then do check out my full animation course that goes right from the basics through to animating characters and putting them in game engines. Only $15, link in the description. Okay, let's go back to front view. And I want to add in a bone structure for this person. So I'll press Shift A to add, or you can go to the add menu up here, and under armature, we've got single bone. You can see the bones added there. I can press G to grab to move that around, or R to rotate, just like you would normally with any other object in Blender. However, this is all in object mode at the moment. We've got two other modes, edit mode and pose mode. Generally speaking, you do all your edits and building your armature or extra bones in edit mode. Then when it comes to moving them around with your character, you do that in pose mode roughly speaking. So I want to be in edit mode to build my armature. 
Now that I'm in edit mode, I can select the different parts of my bone. So the main body, which selects everything and either end. And I can move these independently by pressing G to grab. Notice if I select the whole bone and press G to grab in the Z axis. So it's going to become his spine, should we say. The object origin stays there. That's because we're editing in edit mode and it can kind of be helpful to have your object origin in the center like that for the sake of things like mirroring your rig so you only have to model one side. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll grab the end and press G to grab in the Z. So this is going to be their spine and then I can extrude another one out by pressing E to extrude and again Z in the Z axis. So we've got a bone for the head there. We could of course have a bone for the neck as well, but I'm keeping it really simple. Now you'll notice if I select this middle point here and press G to grab, these are joined together. They don't have to be joined together. I could select this head bone here and duplicate it. So shift D to duplicate and bring that down for the arm and then rotate 90 degrees and actually just move it again. And I'll just shorten this slightly, grab the end, G the next to move that in slightly. So it's roughly in the middle there. And I probably want to bring this one outwards very, very slightly to somewhere around here. Now this looks disconnected, but it actually has a black dotted line going to this other bone here. That means there is a parent relationship. So it is connected to this bone here. These two bones are a child of this bone. That means anything that happens to this, like rotation or movement, will happen to these two as well. As an example, if I go across to pose mode now, so that's where we start moving our characters. If I select this bone here and press R to rotate, you can see those two bones moving with it. However, this one is a child of this one. And if I rotate that, you can see it's not affecting anything else unless we had an extra bone coming out here. This one as well, if I press R to rotate, I can do that independently. If I press G to grab, I can actually independently move this because even though it's a child of the other bone, it's not actually physically connected. Whereas this one, if I press G to grab, I can't move it because it's connected to this one here. So that's the different types of connection you can have. Don't panic if that doesn't make too much sense at the moment. It'll become more apparent when you start animating. So let's continue our character. And hopefully remember to build more bones, I need to go back to edit mode. I'll select this endpoint here, E to extrude in the X and bring that out. And I want to have some more bones coming down here. Now, if I select these two bones and press shift D to duplicate, you can see that it's connected to the tail of this bone. So I'll just quickly position these bones. So R to rotate and move them into position. A Little bit of adjustment. Now, if I go back to pose mode, if I select this bone, press R to rotate, I want to just move the upper body, but the legs are moving with it. So ideally we don't want the leg bones connected to the spine bone. We want them connected to some other bone. So we need an extra bone sticking out the back and we call that the root bone. What I'll do is I'll come around to the back here, back to edit mode, remember? and select on the base here and press E to extrude in the Y this time. So you've got this strange bone sticking out the back here. And it's important to note that the bone structure of your characters or creatures doesn't have to match the actual bone structure that you might expect. You can have bones sticking out all over the place for different reasons. And this one in particular, we want to connect this bone to this one here. So I'll select this leg here and I want to parent it to this one here. You always select the object you want to parent to last. So it's the active object and it always highlights yellow. I can now press control P to parent. And that's also under the armature menu under parent just here. And you can see the shortcut control P make parent. And you'll see this option now, keep offset or connected. We actually want to keep its position. So it's called an offset. It's away from the bone. So I want to tick on that. If I undo that and press control P to parent and use connected, you can see it jumps to the tail of that bone, which we don't want. So I'll undo that control P and use keep offset. So now we're connected to this bone. If I come up to pose mode, if I now move this bone G to grab, I can move the legs independently of the spine. And if I select on the spine, I can move the upper body now. Now I might want to move the whole body together so I can easily connect the spine to this kind of root bone, as it's called here. I'll go back into edit mode, select the spine, select the root bone, control P, and I do need to keep offset again because the parent relationship is to the tail of the bone, not the head. So again, back to pose mode, and I can select that root bone, G to grab and move the whole armature. Okay, so we've got our really basic rig, and now's a good time to pause the video, catch up with me to create your own rig on one side of the model. So now if I go to front view, I want to copy these across to the other side. Well, there's a nice easy way to do that, but each of these bones have to be labeled correctly in order for that to happen. So I'll go back into edit mode and with this bone selected, 
I'll come down to the bone properties here and we've got the name there. So this is upper arm dot L and the dot L suffix is really important. That tells Blender that this bone is on the left hand side and if I want to mirror it, it will create a new one over here and it will give it the name upper arm dot R. So it's quite clever and very useful. So I need to go through renaming these. So this is lower arm dot L, upper leg dot L and lower leg dot L. And I may as well rename these head and spine. And remember we've got this, what's called a root bone around here. Okay, so now with all my bones with the correct naming, I can select all, right click, and there's an option here, symmetrize. And you can see it's created the bones on the other side. And if I select one, you can see it's got the suffix dot R. So that's really useful. So good idea to catch up with me and symmetrize your bones. So how do we attach this armature to our blob person? Well, for that, I need to be back in object mode. So I'll press tab to go into object mode. So that's object mode up here. And in the same way we were parenting the bones, I need both of them to be selected and my armature to be selected last. So I'm parenting my character or cube as it's called at the moment to my armature. So I can select both and you can see the armature is highlighted yellow. So that's the active object. If it isn't, you can shift left click to make sure that's the active object. I can now press control P and there's an option called with automatic weights. We'll select that and let's try it out by going into pose mode. So I'll choose pose mode for the armature and I can rotate and move my bones around and therefore move my character. Now, if I move the arm, for example, you can see that the neck is squishing in there and the torso is coming out here. So it looks a little bit odd. This is known as the object's weights. And remember we chose automatic weights. Well, what Blender was doing was finding the nearest vertices to the nearest bone and matching them up and saying, I want this bone to affect these vertices. We can actually see the weights by going back across to object mode and making the character or the cube in this case, which we can now see under the armature here because it's a child of the armature. We can make that the active object. So I'll hold down shift and left click. So that's the active object. And under the modes, we've got weight paint mode. Now currently this bone down here is selected and I'll just open up x-ray mode so I can see my bones. And what that is telling us is anything in red is fully influenced by this bone, but this bone does actually have some influence on this area up here but it's much smaller, so that's highlighted in green. If I change to this bone here by Alt left clicking, you can see that this area here has the most influence, slowly becoming less as it goes from green to blue. And I can Alt left click on different bones to see the influence they have. And we can see that's why this area is being affected by this bone, if I Alt left click on that. It's because this bone does have some influence on this area. And you can use weight painting to paint different amounts to different areas, but that's outside the scope of this tutorial. But hopefully if I zoom out a bit and Alt left click, you should see the major influence of these bones being on the vertices that are directly around them. Okay, so catch up with me parenting the character to the armature. So how do I animate this? Well, I'm going to go out of edit mode, back into object mode, and I just want to choose the armature. And once again, go to pose mode. I'll bring the timeline up slightly so we can see that. What I want to do is set keyframes for the bones. If you're unsure about keyframes, then do check out the first lesson in this playlist. So I'll select all the bones first and press Alt R to remove any rotation. And if you have moved any bones, then Alt G will remove any movement. And I can press I to insert a keyframe as we did in the last lecture. I'll move my timeline up a little bit further and zoom out just a touch more and open up the disclosure box over here and the summary so we can see the effect that that's having. So I've added a keyframe for all my bones and if I open up the root bone, you can see we've got location, quaternion rotation, and scale. Don't worry too much about quaternion. It's basically a type of rotation. So I'll minimize that. And let's move across to frame 20 and have our character move around slightly. So maybe this leg comes outside here and he leans over this way slightly. This arm might go up in the air and this arm might go down. Now we do need to remember to select all and press I to insert a keyframe. And we can see this movement here. Now straight away you'll probably see some limitations of the rig because if I want to lean the character over I need to come around to the back here and select the root bone here, G to grab and move it over and rotate it slightly and it's all a bit awkward. I have to press G to grab to move this leg and the foot's not quite on the floor and there's lots you need to do to make a better rig but it's a starting point. I'll select all again and press I on my keyboard to insert a keyframe to overwrite the other ones and you can see this sort of 
leaning on one leg. Now let's go to frame 40 and if I press the record button now I can move my character around and all the movement will be recorded. I'll press G to grab on that one and maybe rotate that leg slightly and you can see that movement has now been recorded and it looks like he's doing some sort of funny high kick there. So hopefully that's given you enough information to make some really basic characters and animate them. If you want to render out your animations, then do take a look at the previous videos in this playlist. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you've got any questions, then do comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.